Good evening and we begin tonight with what appears to be a bit of a mystery surrounding the source of a local congressional candidate's paycheck. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko and I'm Laurel Porter. New questions sparked by a report in the Daily Beast that found the company Republican Joe Kent pointed to as the source of his six figure salary last year doesn't seem to exist. Let's bring in Catherine Cook of the newsroom and Catherine KGW has been working on its own reporting on this and tonight you also went to a campaign rally to try to get some clarity from Kent and his team. Yeah, Laurel, the article notes that Kent has said he works for a tech startup called American Enterprise Solutions. But when the Daily Beast searched for it, they reportedly found no record that the company exists. KGW did do its own independent search and also couldn't find such a record. We wanted to ask Kent himself about it tonight. In Vancouver Monday night, Joe Kent took the stage to rousing applause. What he didn't take were questions from the media. At the same time, we are being absolutely plagued by crime at every single level. We wanted to ask Kent about this article published by the Daily Beast. It notes the Republican candidate for Washington's 3rd Congressional District has said he made just over $122,000 last year as a project manager for a tech startup called American Enterprise Solutions. The confusion... According to the article, there's no record the company exists. Reached by email, the Daily Beast reported Kent's spokesperson said American Enterprise Solutions is a technology company registered in Delaware and operated out of Reston, Virginia. However, the Daily Beast couldn't find a company registered with that name in Delaware, and neither could we. KGW ran its own search. Three separate databases came up empty for business entities registered in Delaware under American Enterprise Solutions. Also, a national search for American Enterprise Solutions found several businesses, though nothing in Delaware. Again, we wanted to ask Kent to clarify who he worked for and why the company he lists wasn't showing up in any public records, but he declined to answer questions. A campaign staff member told us they plan to release a statement responding to the article on Tuesday. Those who attended the town hall told us they didn't know about the report and were just happy to support Kent. We all just want to have a positive future together. We don't want to be divided. This is positive energy. These are people that want to see a change. By Kent's side Monday, former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who recently left the Democratic Party. Everything that I thought about him to be true is actually true. He's a great American who loves our country. A reminder, Kent is running against Democratic candidate Marie Glusenkamp Perez for Washington's third congressional seat. She owns an auto shop. On social media today, she posted a response to the Daily Beast article saying, quote, my business definitely exists, not that anyone needed to ask. Again, Kent's staff tells us they plan to release a statement tomorrow regarding his employer. David. We'll see if we get an answer there. Thank you, Catherine. Let's give you an update tonight on the race for Oregon governor. And earlier tonight on the story, we dug into a new poll showing once again just how tight this appears to be. According to the survey, Republican Christine Drazen is at 43 percent, Democrat Tina Kotek at 42, but that is within the 3 percent margin of error. Unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson at 12, just 2 percent undecided. This poll was done last week by the group Data for Progress. That is a self-described progressive think tank and polling firm. We also thought we'd show you this, the update from 538. It takes an average of all the polls and takes into account quality, how recent sample size and partisan tilt. Drazen holding the lead there just over half a percent. We've got much more on the candidate's spending, by the way, on the story page of our KGW YouTube channel. And it's going to be a close race, so your vote really counts. Ballots for the election have been delivered or are on their way to your mailbox. For our full guide covering the candidates and measures, text the word ELECTION to 503-226-5088 for a link to our online article. All right, let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. Investigators in Washington County say one of their deputies stabbed a man inside an ER after the suspect tried to take the deputy's gun. This happened in Hillsborough around 3 this morning at Kaiser Permanente Westside Medical Center. Police say the suspect was in protective custody at the time and then was taken to the trauma center. No word on his condition. They add a hospital staffer suffered minor injuries when they tried to intervene. The deputy's been placed on leave, which is standard protocol.
Portland police have arrested a suspect in connection with a homicide in Northeast Portland earlier this month. Police have charged 22 year old Zachary Tyler Hackman in the murder of James Harris. And this is a photo of Harris. His body was found the evening of October 9th on Northeast Marine Drive. Officers have arrested Hackman on an unrelated call. Hackman is now in the Multnomah County Jail. This case is still under investigation and anyone with information is asked to contact Portland police. And Vancouver police are investigating a shooting. They say may be a case of self-defense. Police say a man called them around 445 this morning and said he'd shot at two people who he said pulled a gun on him. The caller said he was walking to work by Northeast Vancouver Mall Drive and Northeast 72nd Avenue. That's just a few blocks from Vancouver Mall. Police say one person was shot in the leg, a 15 year old boy. Officers detained the man who says he fired the shots for questioning. A follow up this evening on Portland Mayor Wheeler's major plan to address the Rose City's homeless crisis, one that aims to eventually ban unsanctioned camping across the city. Blair Best talked with business owners who are anxiously awaiting a change. The mayor's plan to address homelessness comes after dozens of downtown businesses have already closed, in part due to the homeless crisis. Now, many business owners are wishing that this plan had come a lot sooner. When walking downtown Portland, it's hard not to notice the empty storefronts and for lease signs at nearly every corner. You know, it's going to be a very long process to recover from this. Some describe it as a slow deterioration, one of the many side effects of the city's homeless crisis. The closer you get to Old Town, the worse it, it, it is. Todd Gooding runs Scanlon Kemper Bard Companies, which owns five commercial buildings downtown. In recent months, they've lost tenants and are now in the process of selling two buildings, all due to safety concerns. We've had multiple assaults. Basically, you know, from Pioneer Square north, it, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty rough still. Last week, Mayor Ted Wheeler announced a five-part plan to address this crisis head-on. It includes banning camping over an 18-month period and building three giant homeless campuses instead. It calls for 20,000 affordable housing units by 2033 and changes to city protocols so the homeless can easily access addiction and mental health services and get jobs. I think it's a step in the right direction. I uh, I think, I hope he goes all the way and outlaws uh, camping on the streets. I live in Portland. I like Portland. I'd love it to be back to where it was. This is Tim Boyle, the president and CEO of Columbia Sportswear, which has also been negatively impacted by this crisis. He's now moving the Sorrell Shoe and Clothing Division out of downtown and into Washington County. You know, we're trying to attract people to come to work for the company. And Portland was a net positive in many, many ways for years. It's now a net negative. Do you have faith in city government that they can pull off a plan of this magnitude? I'm anxious to see some action. There's been lots of discussion on the topic, as you know. Most of these issues are as a result of lack of funding. This is not the case here. There is an enormous amount of money available for this topic. and. We haven't seen any action. Today, the mayor is in L.A. to see how they deal with homelessness. Now, on Wednesday, he'll present his plan to city council. That meeting is open to the public. You just have to register. Blair Best, KGW News.